right, so here it is here. This is the seat I got. Uh, overall, I'm happy with it. For 350 bucks, I'd actually already set it on the floor of the truck and sat in it, rode in it. She's pretty sturdy and everything. She's solid. So, I know some people, I think, in the reviews, it's like 300-something pounds. Complain about the back flexing a little bit. But, I mean, when you're 300 pounds, something's going to be flexing. Uh, it's not a solid piece of metal, so it's going to move. But, uh, no, the build quality and everything's good with them. They're good-looking seats. Uh, I like the material. I like the carbon fiber uh, looking pattern that it's got on the back. So, overall, it's good, nice quality. So, and like I said, it comes with two of them. Uh, so, can't really argue for 350 bucks. It's an upgrade from the stock ones. Uh, actually, I got the stock ones right there that I already pulled the rails off the bottom because I'm going to reuse the factory rails. Let's get you a weight difference between the two here. So, uh, show you the weight savings that this is going to get me, which that's the only part of it. I mean, it looks a lot better and they fit a lot better than stock ones, but we'll show you the weight difference between these and the uh, set of stock seats. All right, so my body weight is 154.2. Let's take the race seat here. Let's see what it weighs. All right, so we're looking right at, that was 185.4. So we're looking right at 31.2 pounds for the race seat. I'm gonna go over here, grab a heavy one. All right, so now this is gonna be the factory seat. Now, Keep in mind, I have already taken stuff apart from this, so it's actually going to be lighter than it originally was. So I was 154.2, holding the stock seat. I am 194.2. So you're looking at 40 pounds, and that's what everything already taken off of this thing. All right, now, I did weigh it before I took it all apart. I think those seats was around 56 pounds each compared to this one without the rails, it was 30 pounds. So really you're looking maybe around 25 pounds total, like before I disassembled the stock seats. So you end up looking at about 50 pounds saving really between this seat and the stock ones. I wish I would have uh, got on video the weight of them before I stripped them down. But anyways, I'm gonna show you how I got this to work with the stock seat brackets and stuff in the truck. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. All right, so basically what I did here, this is gonna be the very bottom rail, just the slider off the factory seat. Uh, so these actually originally was bolted on here like that. So I took a couple bolts out I needed to get out. I ended up cutting the side with a uh, saw just to make them easier to get to and I didn't plan on saving the seats anyways. But I cut them with the grinder just to get to them easier. And then I went along, grinded off all the studs to make it flush so that the seats rails because they're just flat whatever could sit flush down on this and then this is basically the retainer for the slider so it allows you to lock it in place for the stock slider i took it to a buddy of mine um, it did have a bracket that came over here to the middle with bolts but like i said the race seat slider has to sit right there so it wouldn't be able to sit down flush so i cut it with the um, as well took it to my buddy had them just welded straight to the side and that's more than strong enough for just basically retaining for the slider. So I'm going to slap some paint on these and uh, just to seal them back up and then I'll show you how to get them mounted to the bottom of the seat. Alright so first things first we got the seats sliders here. Uh, what I did is I took a couple carriage bolts, got them down so they could fit down in this uh, inside the rail here. And they're actually uh, elongated holes, so it slides on in there, locks itself into place pretty well. Did that on both sides. See here. Same over here. So it goes in, locks into place. Let me grab one of the rails over there. 
All right, so I got my factory rail here. What I'm gonna do? Pop the carriage bolt into place like that. Need to slide this down to get to the bolt hole I want. All right. Hold it in place with the finger, stick it in the hole, and I do this bottom one first because it's the hardest one to get to. So put that on there. Put your lock washer on, then get your nuts started. Slider, slide up, and grab that bolt that drop. Stick the bolt to the top. Slide this down. All right, so you got your bolt through. Put you another lock washer, another nut, and that's that side. Maybe after 20 minutes of fighting with this one, we'll get it started. There we go. She's on there. Look at that. Got her. All right, and then you're just gonna go around, tighten them all up. So let me do that real quick, and then I'll show you the install of the truck. All right, so I got the rails all bolted up. Take her. So she dropped down over the holes. We're gonna take you. See, so you get you a closer view. Take nut there. That's a nice benefit of having two sliders too. Makes it easy to get to these damn bolts. All right, so all those are on. Let's go grab my impact.
run them on down. Benefits of dual sliders. Um, socket for the other one all right sorry about that guys i just spent the last damn 10-15 minutes looking all over for a damn socket just to find out it was in my damn pocket so slide that back So, she's mounted on in there. Let me just slide the other one back. So that's pretty much it, guys. They're in, they're just about the way I like them. Uh, to me, I mean, they look real good. They're solid. They got little spots on them right now just for me putting them in, being sweaty on the leather. But no, they look good. Uh, the only thing I got left, which uh, FedEx just dropped off the box, I gotta run the, my four point harness. I'm gonna weld tabs to the back wall of the cab and then uh bolt the other tabs to the back of the bottom of the rail near where they mount to the floor and that's where i'm gonna run my four points off of to come around for the lap belt and the shoulder straps so that'll handle my restraints and uh yeah like i said overall i'm happy with them the handles nice and firm tilt forward tilt backs locks in Ugh, trying to do it one hand but uh yeah and uh with the way I got them set up on the driver, the driver's side is the only one with the dual slider set up. The passenger side, it's got two sliders, but I got the bottom one locked in place basically by running a bolt through the hole in the side to lock it out. So that, I mean, I could set it up the same way, take it to them, weld them, have them put this retainer on there with the latch. So that one's dual sliding too, but I ain't super worried about it. I mean, it's still plenty of adjustable ability with just the slider of the factory seat. I mean, uh, of the race seats rail so but this driver's seat leaves plenty of room here so i mean i can slide way up here underneath the dash if i want to Just slide all the way back and that's only using the top slider that's not even using the factory one so like if i need to work in the back of the truck i can slide the race seat slider all the way forward all right, I can get out. It's gonna require both hands, so pardon the shoddy camera work. I can grab the tabs for the factory sleep, slide it even further forward, tilt it, and it goes almost all the way up underneath the dash. So if I need to get to anything back there or do any kind of work back there, like if I had a cage or anything, it leaves me tons of room to get back there and do some work. So. Yeah, that's going to be it for this video overall. I'm happy with it for 350 bucks for the pair. Can't really go wrong with it. Uh, it worked fine with the stock seat brackets. It just took a little work and creativity, but hopefully I kind of showed you what you can do to get them work with the stock brackets on the Silverado because I don't see too many people out there that offers brackets for it. Uh, I will say the passenger side for some reason, Chevrolet, instead of uh, making the same bracket width for the passenger and driver's side that is a different size so that one actually takes a little more finagling but you can still do it with the factory seat mounts in fact i can show you that real quick so if you see here basically what i'd do is i had to notch these here just because instead of 14 and a half center it's 13 and a half center so i notched the bolt hole here as well as the bolt hole that goes in the bottom of the rail to give it adjustability so that's what ended up having to do them but the stock rail still worked all right guys well as always the link for the seats and everything will be down in the description i appreciate you guys watching if you could like subscribe it really helps me out and i'll catch you guys in the next one and stay tuned